Walt Disney World is the idea of Walter Elias Disney. The idea of Walt Disney World came after he built Disneyland in California. Disneyland comprises 450 acres in the middle of uh, Southern California. The problem that he had at Disneyland is there's nothing expanding around Disneyland other than residential areas, commercial areas, and other things like that, which prohibits what he can do or could have done at Disneyland, you know, for all of his, you know, uh, people's enjoyment. So we have Walter Elias Disney here in, in Disneyland with Mickey Mouse in one of his parades, and he decided he wanted to do something somewhere else on the East Coast for everybody over here that we can go to because not everybody can travel to California very cheaply. So he decided that he was going to do something uh, in Central Florida specifically due to the weather. And that idea started in 1964. Uh, and the purchase of land began uh, shortly thereafter after having this idea. And he bought 28,000 acres in, right outside of Kissimmee in Orlando. Um, and construction started in 1971. The um, first two things to be built was the Magic Kingdom, uh, Cinderella's Castle, and two resorts for people to stay to come and visit the park. Um, they bought the 28,000 acres of land for roughly $5.5 million. And that um, was um, roughly uh, one of the rumored uh, things is, is that there was three quarters of the land bought for the same price as the last one quarter of the property that they bought. So the price is, you know, as people found out that it was Walt, you know, Walt Disney buying all the property, the pricing went up. So as Walt was buying the property, he was doing it through three and four um, companies removed from himself. So it was a secret land purchase. Um, and uh, the first public announcement that he was doing this came in 1965 in November. And it was a 24 minute press conference uh, by Walt and Roy Disney, the, the two brothers. And this is, you know, the construction started there, uh, which was, the, again, the first Walt uh, Magic Kingdom Park and two resorts. The uh, Walt Disney now, uh, Walt Disney World now comprises of four major theme parks and two water parks. It has also about uh, six golf courses. Downtown Disney, which comprises a um, Treasure Island, which is an adult-oriented uh, theme uh, area, and shopping and dining experiences for families. They also built Celebration, which is a town. It's a model of um, what a, an American city should be like in the future based on Walt Disney's uh, ideals. They also have uh, 21 resorts and a cruise line as well. Um, their cruise line comprising of uh, now four ships. And we have a short clip um, that will introduce a little bit more of the history. Walter Elias Disney was born on December 5, 1901. He was an American film producer, director, screenwriter, animator, entrepreneur, and international icon. Walt Disney created the Florida Project in 1964. He began secretly purchasing 27,000 acres of swampland in central Florida. In 1966, Walt Disney released his 24-minute preview of the Florida Project. At the age of 65 on December 15th, Walt Disney passes away of lung cancer. His brother Roy moves Florida with the Disney World Project. 1969 is when construction began on Disney's Magic Kingdom, including the 189-foot-high Cinderella Castle. On October 1st, 1971, Disney's Magic Kingdom opens for the first time. Approximately 10,000 visitors. For the next eight years, Disney World continues to add attractions such as Tomorrowland, Frontierland, Adventureland, and many others. In 1971, construction begins on Epcot. In 1989, Disney MGM Studios opens on May 1st. In 1998, Disney's Animal Kingdom opens as the fourth theme park at Walt Disney World Resort on April 22nd. A 
Okay, so with the construction of Walt Disney World, they did start building uh, the four individual parks within. Starting off with Animal Kingdom, it opened up April 22, 1998, and it was its newest park at the time. It cost nearly $1 billion, and they had an additional part of the land that they wanted to add on to it, but because of budget, cost, they ended up cutting that project. Animal Kingdom is 500 acres, and it's home to 1,700 animals representing 250 different species. If you go on the Wild Africa Trek, that gets you up close to the animals, and it's saying, they say that when you ride on that ride, you want to do it twice. Go on the left side, and you get to see everything on the left side, you get to see all the animals up close, and get pictures without anybody being in the way, and then you go on the second time, and you can see on the right side of it, and get everything on the right side of it. And this is an up close picture of one of the lions throughout the ride. And this is the Expedition Everest. And Expedition Everest is a uh, landscape in Asia. The attraction is a, the attraction is a two-way track, and it's a system that goes forwards and backwards whenever the mystical Yeti is attacking your ride, and when you're trying to go through the Forbidden Forest. Epcot. What a lot of people don't know is Epcot is actually an acronym, meaning. Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. Epcot opened in 1982. Conceived by Walt Disney to take its cue from new ideas and new technologies, they are now emerging from the creative centers on American industries. For many years, Epcot was considered an adult park, and Disney didn't want that reputation for Epcot. So throughout Epcot, they have what they call Kidcot sections. And in the Kidcot sections, children can go to these stations, and they can build their own souvenir. And throughout the whole park, there's different Kid Cot sections, and each one from each Kid Cot you can take with you, and you can build your own unique piece to take home. Soren is one of the rides at uh, Epcot. It's one of the more most visited sites. So if you're wanting to go to Soren in Epcot, they recommend that you do like a fast pass, so you can kind of like cut in line, or you get there when the park opens. Future World is one of the areas in Epcot, one of the two areas, and it's, it aims more towards like a futuristic side of um, what the world's going to be like and how science is advancing. And then the last one of the two is World Showcase, and World Showcase is a, shows there's different countries and then there's characters dressed up in in costume for to represent that country, and they talk to you about you know what's there, and uh, the different rides, and then with that is Disney's Hollywood Studios, and everybody's familiar with all the Disney movies, and there's just countless and endless. Everybody's seen a Disney movie at some point in their life, and throughout most of Hollywood Studios at Disney World, they have different movies and they have the different characters playing in uh, in script. Hollywood Studios opened May 1st in 1989. Chairman Michael Eisen, Eisner declared, Welcome the Hollywood that never was and always will be. Hollywood Studios was put together once. They heard Universal had plans to build a park, so that kind of rushed them to do their own thing. Hollywood Studios was put together, and Universal had plans to open in 1990, which they did. In the beginning, the park lacked in attractions, but over the year, they added so many different more areas to the park with more movies coming out. The Rock and Roller Coaster is one of the more unique and most visited in uh, Hollywood Studios. And throughout the ride, there's a, a big theme of it is the band Aerosmith, which I'm sure most of you are uh, familiar with. And throughout the ride, there's just there's different songs that'll play when you're going through different tunnels and everything. And um, it's an indoor roller coaster with a high speed of 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds, which is, so that's very fast. You get in a limo, and uh, it's like Aerosmith's in there, and then it takes you on the limo, and you get off on a G-Force down in Hollywood night, and you go down, and you see landmarks that are mostly depicted in Southern California. Star Tours is probably the most famous there at Hollywood Studios. Here, you'll, it's fully dedicated to Star Wars. Walk in, and the first thing you'll see is R2-D2 and C-3PO hard at work on the Star Speeder 3000. And then there's a large TV listing different arrival and departure times, so it's kind of depicting like an, a modern-day airport or what they like to say, a starport. 
And at the end of the walk, you'll get your 3D glasses, and you'll take flight. And there's no doubt you're boarding a rebel spy. You're boarding as a rebel spy. And you can watch the video to see who you are. And at the end of the ride, you'll exit through the Tabooni Trader's gift shop. And out front of the Star Tours, there's actually a Jedi training. So they have like the lightsabers out, and uh, they'll train you on how to use them. And they'll teach you how to defend yourself against Darth Vader and the Stormtroopers. Another one is Hollywood Tower of Terror. Hands down, one of the most, another visited attraction at MGM. And on this ride, you go through a lobby filled with Renaissance, French Renaissance uh, couches and uh, items scattered along the walls. And uh, movie props are all around. Through this ride, it takes you through the library and then you enter the Twilight Zone. And each ride is different and every time Every time you go on the ride, it's different. So you'll go on and it might be in a different order. Like you might go to the library and then you'll get into the Twilight Zone or the next time it might be the other way around. So it's always kind of different and unique. The most visited part in all of Disney is Magic Kingdom. And everybody's familiar with the castle. You know, they see it in movies. And um, it said Disney's true essence can be felt here. Magic Kingdom opened in 1971. It withstood three decades of changing cultures and it's still undisputed king of theme parks, drawing more yearly visitors than any other. In Magic Kingdom, there's four distinct areas, Tomorrowland, Fantasyland, Frontierland, and Adventureland. Each land is unique to its own name. Magic Kingdom has a series of underground tunnels, so throughout the whole park, it connects those four. And when they built Magic Kingdom, since Florida is at sea level, they couldn't dig underneath. So the park itself is actually built up and the tunnels are at ground level where most people think it'd be underground. And it prevents guests from seeing like behind the scenes of different lands and like Cinderella going, you know, walking over to get some food or something. You don't see her doing that. And most spectacular are the fireworks displayed every night at Magic Kingdom. If anybody's ever been to Magic Kingdom, they always have a fireworks show. And then here is Fantasyland. And Fantasyland, you have the castle in the background right there. And they rebuilt it actually pretty recently. And then Adventureland is part jungle and it's part tropical with a desert oasis thrown into it. From the street, you enter the park by a wooden crossing uh, bridge. One of the most popular rides here is Pirates of the Caribbean, and it's a series of underground tavern cave-like tunnels that lead the boat ride. Once on the boat, you flip through the cave very quickly and take a dark plunge at the end. And then Frontierland is the other uh, of the four lands. And in Frontierland, you follow a stream of banjo music playing throughout the entire area, and you'll smell the turkey legs that they're always cooking there. Frontierland is a series of themed rides that very much replicate America's pioneer homeland. Throughout Frontierland, there's western shops where guests can buy souvenirs. Frontierland is home to the notorious Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain is a water ride where you sit in a log and it takes you through a series of taverns and caves. And it takes you up through the swamps, the bayous, and down three minor drops before climaxing to the 52 plunge that you see right here. And at this drop is where they take all the pictures, where everybody's got their funny face, where if they know it's going to take a picture there, everybody's horrified face. Tomorrowland um, was originally designed to portray Disney's view on the future. The only trouble with futuristic views is as time changing, the park needs to change too. In this land, you will find lots of neon glass and gleaming metal that make up a lot of the park. There's metal palm trees scattered throughout, which are very reactive to sunlight. Tomorrowland is now for its world-famous Space Mountain. Space Mountain is 2 minutes and 30 seconds long, remains pop the most popular ride after 30 years. It may not have loops, and only at 28.7 miles per hour, it's not the fastest. But it's the theme that sets it apart. You're riding in a spaceship, and you're blasting through space, and there's no other ride that's going to be like that. Before you know it, your hair's a mess, and you want to go again and again. While you're going to the parks all weekend, you know, if you want to get away for a couple days, you're going to need to stay in a resort, and Disney has plenty of those to offer.
And if you look like the staying in the resort, Disney World has over 27 different types of resorts. Uh, they also have a camping resort. Um, Disney break their resorts down in themes, basically depending on the area of the resort. The first resort I'm going to get into is the All Star Music. Uh, I mean, all, yeah, All Star Movies. And this is basically, uh, they got the theme of Fantasia, 101 Dalmatians, Toy Story, Mighty Ducks. And they also, this uh, resort was built in 1999. They also have the All Star Music theme uh, with jazz, rock, Broadway, and country. This resort was built in 1994. Uh, they also have the All-Star Sports, um, basically covering all the sports. This uh, resort was built in 1994. Then they got the, uh, the art animation. Uh, basically all the, not all of them, but most of the cartoons that Disney come out with um, are theme at this uh, resort. This resort was built in 2012. And this is Pop Central. Um, Pop Central basically uh, theme is uh, has the 70s, 80s, 90s. And they were going to add the millennium years, but um, after the attack of 9-11, they canceled the, uh, the, uh, the extension on it. Because uh, tourists stopped coming to the, uh, well, they didn't stop, but it, it wasn't popular because people were scared to travel. Um, the next uh, is the modern, the, the modern uh, resorts. And the first one I'm going to get into is the Caribbean beach theme. Their theme is the, the white the white beaches, basically seven seven different uh, pools. They basically want you to be uh, like you're on the beach or something. And this is the Colorado Springs. Um, I guess their theme is this 46 foot uh, uh, pyramid. And this resort was built in 1997. Uh, they want you to make you feel like you're in Mexico or Southwest USA. Uh, this is the Port Orange, I mean the Port French Quarters. Um, their theme basically is this, uh, this dragon and they also have an alligator. This uh, resort was built in 1991. Um, this is the uh, Port uh, New Orleans Riverside, nicknamed the Old Man. Uh, I guess if you just want to relax, have a good time, you don't want a bunch of kids running around, I guess this would be a place for you. Um, this is another view of it. Then you have the Deluxe. This is where it, you're going to spend lots of money, and you're going to really enjoy yourself. The first one I'm going to get into is the, uh, this is the Animal Kingdom uh, Resort. They, they, they actually got three different resorts. Um, this one is the uh, Animal Kingdom Lagoon. Uh, they got like 200 different types of hooves, animals roaming around freely. Uh, birds flying around, you know, just the uh, typical, like, like you're in Africa, basically. Um, oh, yeah, they're also known for their restaurant. Okay, let's move on. This is the Disney board, Boardwalk Inn. Um, it's close, it's walking distance by, it's walking distance to Epcot and MGM Studios. And then this is the, uh, the Disney Beach Club. Um, it basically has your uh, New England style theme. And the contemporary. Uh, I like this one because of uh, 
the monorail system going through the, uh, the resort. Actually, um, President Nixon did, I'm not a crook speech at this one. This is one of the original resorts built in 1971. Um, also, with most, most of all the resorts, they, they have like a, a, all these different types of activities. You just say you want to stay at a resort and um, you have kids. Most of all the resorts have some kind of uh, some kind of a uh, uh, like a like a childcare center where you don't even have to watch your kid or nothing. And, uh, and this is the Grand Floridian. Uh, the the Grand Floridian is like one of the most expensive uh, resorts in the whole park. Um, this resort, you'll be treated like a king or a queen. Uh, they got parades, uh, top of the line resort. And then you have the, this, the Persian Nisman. The Persian Nisman? Oh, right. Pos Pos yeah. Okay, um, this is located right next to the Grand Floridian. Um, yeah, its theme is the volcano. The volcano thing. Uh, they also have uh, uh, watercraft rentals. You can go fishing, all types of things. This here is the dolphin resort, and um, you basically gotta be able to swim like a fish to uh, the the go to this resort because it has a three acre pool, uh, hot tubs. And here is the the Wilderness Lagoon. Uh, has this 80, 82 foot stone fireplace. And here is the Yacht, Yacht Club Resort. Um, okay. And this is the Home Away From Home Resorts. Vacation homes. Uh, remember when I said, uh, that, uh, that, um, that Animal Kingdom had two, what, three different types of resorts? Well, this is the, uh, Jumbo, the Jumbo, Jumbo House. And, um, basically the difference between this one and the, uh, the Kaiden, Kaiden Resort is the, uh, it's the um the place where you check in at. It's real big. Uh, this is the back side of it. Uh, this is the Bay Lakes Towers. This was built in 2009. Um, you can have two views. You can have a view of the Cinderella Castle, or you can have a view of the Bayside Lakes. Um, this was built in 2009. You can choose from a one bedroom, two bedroom, or a three bedroom. Uh, it's full, it's have, it has a full kitchen, granite countertops, fully loaded. Um, this is the Disney Beach Club, the Boardwalk Villas. The, uh, this is, uh, if you want to go like camping, you want to be in the woods, this is the, uh, wilderness, uh, the wilderness uh, cabins, and this is the old western, the um, San Diego Springs Treehouse Villas, and the Villas. And if you would like to stay at one of the cruise lines, I got Chris here to uh, tell you guys about that. So if you want to sit there and go to Walt Disney World, but you don't want to go to the parks and you don't want to stay at the resort over there, you want to spend a one week all inclusive, here's how you do it. This is the cruise ships. You have Disney Magic on the top and you have the Disney Wonder down here at the bottom. And they're the first two ships. The Disney Magic set sail in 1998. The Disney Magic and the Disney Wonder are sister ships, so they're practically identical. They have a gross tonnage of 83,000 tons. 
They hold 2,400 passengers. They are 964 feet long, 106 feet wide, and they have a 25 and a quarter foot draft. That means that underneath that water line is another 25 feet of boat. Okay, so that's a pretty big ship and, and, and a hunk of steel floating out there on the water. The cruising speed of that ship is 23 knots. And then the Disney Wonder set sail just about a year after the magic in 1999. Now, there's four ships now that uh, comprise the Disney Cruise Line fleet. And the two newest ships, which we'll get to in, in a little bit, are 40% larger than these two right here, okay? And these two ships offer several dining rooms and dining options for you as a family or as you know, a, a couple that are traveling together on, on a cruise. And you can do um, the adult dining rooms, which include this one here. This is Paolo. This is a, a um, adult only restaurant that is an additional fee to eat at this restaurant, but it's only $25 additional per meal per person which for a romantic evening out away from the kids is actually kind of a really cool you know, idea. Um, it is a northern Italian themed restaurant, so it's got northern Italian fare. It's got granite uh, marble um, accoutrements in there along with Venetian glass and, and inlaid wood as part of the decor of that restaurant. The next restaurant is Lumiere's. Lumiere's is probably the signature restaurant on the Disney Magic and the Disney Wonder. And it is based off the movie Beauty and the Beast. So you come into this restaurant and you are sat and you have um, Beauty and the Beast back here in the back, you know, with uh, Cogsworth and Lumiere kind of dancing and, and doing a little show for you. There's two major seatings for this show, and, or for this dinner, and it's a four-course meal. So it's a really cool uh, experience there. Um, and it is a uh, continental American cuisine with a French twist, is the cuisine that they serve in this restaurant. This restaurant is the um, Animator's Palette. It's a themed restaurant showing the uh, art of animation that Disney produces. Uh, there's uh, two shows for this, uh, or two settings for this uh, course or for this meal, and the um, it has two innovative dinner shows with this that you can do while you're doing this, and it um, uh, features the uh, characters from Disney and Disney Pixar. And then the pictures back here in the back are LED pictures, and they're animated. So as you're sitting there eating your meal and you look up and you look at and you see a picture, the next time you look at it, it's gonna be something different. So that's kind of cool. Now, dinner is eating is not the only thing you do on a cruise ship. You also have entertainment options you need to do, you know, to, to look into. And they've got some really cool adult entertainment, you know, for you. This particular adult only uh, location is called um, Fathoms. It is an ocean inspired themed nightclub where you do dancing and, and games and karaoke and they have a modern twist of how well do you know your mate uh, game that they do kind of similar to the old newlywed game you know from TV past so uh, which is kind of cool. This particular bar is called Keys. This is a piano bar. So it's themed after you know, the great piano bars, you know, with the uh, uh, music that they used to play, like the dueling pianos and things like that. So this is kind of cool too. You know, also again, adult only. And it's got the sophisticated art deco theme, you know, for uh, decoration there. This is O'Gill's uh, Pub. It's a sports bar slash lounge uh, featuring live sports related uh, events on TVs. And it also has uh, non-sports related entertainment too, you know, chess, backgammon, checkers, you know, that sort of thing that you can go into and just kind of chill out with. Uh, and again, the little ones. Um, so that's just kind of the, the major things that are available for the adults. But you also have some things that are available for kids. Welcome to the Ocean Air Club. Ocean Air Club. 
up on the deck five of the Disney Magic. We are super excited about this new space. It's an incredible opportunity for the kids to step into a whole bunch of really amazing storybook worlds. This is a great opportunity for uh, the kids to take a step into the world of the fairies and Disney's Pixie Hollow. We have crafts, computer games, costumes, dress up for all the kids to participate in. And then there's some cute little pixie hidden secrets in the ceiling of Pixie Hollow. You know, so the kids hide, they can see it. We have to kind of get a little perspective on that. And then over here behind us, we take a trip into Andy's room from Pixar. And this space is incredible. Two, two level space with a huge slide of Slinky Dog that the kids get to come down. Just amazing. And uh, it's really just like stepping right into the movie. Artwork that is on the his bulletin board is actually artwork pulled directly from the film. And John Lasseter created all of the original drawings of that for us. So that's a really cool thing. designed for kids ages 3 to 12. The Oceaneers Lab is part of that, that um, the Oceaneer Club. You also have the Small World Nursery, which is designed for the kids three years and younger. And then you have the Vibe, which is a club for teenage kids um, ages uh, 13 to 18. Okay. And then you have here the Disney, uh, one, uh, Disney Dream, excuse me, uh, which set sail in 2011. And then the Disney uh, Fantasy, which set sail in 2012. Now these ships are both 40 times, 40% uh, bigger than the Disney Magic and the Disney Wonder, and their gross tonnage is 128,000 tons. They hold 4,000 passengers. They're 1,115 feet long, 120 feet wide, and they have a 26-foot draft. These uh, two ships, or actually all four of them, have dining options that are very similar to each other, and they have cabins that are very similar um, in, in uh, respect to each other as well. And here's a couple of the, uh, excuse me, the, um, the Wonder and the Fantasy both have what's called the Aqueduct. The Aqueduct is this water slide right here. It is the first ever at sea water roller coaster. It's 250 yards long. And it starts at the top of the, the uh, smokestack there, and it ends at, at a pool um, to collect you there. And at one point, which is right there, it's actually over the edge of the railing of the ocean. So you are actually over top of the sea, and you can see down it, uh, as you can see, because that's clear uh, plexi over the, you know, for the tube. 
So you get to go out over top of the edge of the, the ship and then back onto the top decks. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. Yeah. And then you have an option of different cabins. You have, uh, on the top here, you have two inside cabins, okay? And each one has a porthole that actually uh, looks out, so to speak, to uh, the ocean. It's via virtual. There's are LED, LED screens as well. And every now and then, as you watch, you can see a little bit of your uh, Disney character swimming by your porthole, which is kind of cool. It prevents it from being, you know, that that typical inside stateroom where you have no view, have no, you know, nothing to do but look at four walls. And then you have down here, you have two different um, walls with a view to the ocean, and which this one is a porthole, and then this one is a veranda where you actually have to walk out onto and, and see. Um, the inside staterooms and these typically sleep anywhere from three to four and they range from about 169 square feet to uh, a little bit more, where you have this suite, which is called the Concierge Royal Suite with Veranda. And this one sleeps five, and it is 1,781 square feet. That's 1,781 square feet of a hotel room that you get to stay on a ship, okay? Um, and here is another picture of it with, as it actually is decorated. So. Disney has so much to offer. If you want to go to a theme park, or if you want to stay in a resort, or if you want to sail out to sea and just get away from everything, Disney's got your back. And with each one, each unique to its own character. So there's nothing like escaping and just getting away from reality and just sailing away on a magical Disney cruise, theme park, or resort. So I hope one of you, any of you, will go to Disney World, go on a resort, or go on a cruise. Because either way, you're going to have a blast, and Disney's got so much more to offer. Thank you.